Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another one of my reaction videos, and uh, today I'm going to be reacting to a video by a lady called Liana K. Uh, this is the first video I've seen of hers. Um, I did watch like the first two minutes of it, and uh, you know, I thought uh, this could be an interesting thing to react to, so I'm doing it. Um, so it's called, the, the title of the video is called The Last of Us 2 Changed My Mind on Politics in Games. And from what I got about the t first two minutes of this, she's basically going to be talking about how uh, her views have shifted. Like she used to, um, she used to basically think that well, politics are have to be in, in games, and but now, um, she's going to weirdly bring up <laughs> defund the police, and now that's like made her. Um, it, she's like changed how she views people saying that they don't want politics in games and how she thinks that really what they mean is that they don't want like propagandizing in games so um yeah i guess that's uh it's an interesting perspective so well uh i guess i'll respond to what she says as she says it so take it away Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday. Alana, we got okay. Delilah in the background here. You can see her and Momo's in the I like her out. cats. Hello, Momo. They come um, to again. Sorry to just you know, everybody. They're but, pretty cute. Uh, yeah, I have I have come to something of a startling realization, and they both left because they're like, you're running the camera again. Ew. Um, but I've come to something of a startling realization. My views Are on something have shifted dramatically wow. since certain five certainly five years ago. And uh, if you like this sort of content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Uh, by the way, uh, my video did get limited ads yesterday. Yeah, I don't know um, what video she's talking about here. So but, um, it wasn't suitable for most advertisers. Don't know. regret doing it, though, because some people said it really helped them. I don't know. I have no idea what it is. So sometimes I got to do it, even though I know I'm going to get dinged. Hence the Patreon. This might, this won't get demonetized, but this might be another one that I'll take some hits for it. Um, but meaning of phrases change, meaning of words phrase change, um, culture shifts. And some of you may remember that I previously held the view that uh, keep your politics out of our video games was um, not possible because art is art. And sometimes mm -hmm. art has political themes and you can't tell people to be totally apolitical because often politics is in the eye of the beholder. True. Well, a couple Based. things happened. Oh no, she's changing then. her mind. One, the whole defund the police thing, right? And mm -hmm. I've been told over and over and over again that defund the police doesn't literally mean defund the police. It's yeah, a listen, I'll be, I'll, I, I don't know. I don't want to get too political just because I, I mean, okay. I don't <laughs> obviously like um like everything is political. I don't want to get into like um the whole like BLM and Black Lives Matter thing and like defund the police too much, but I will say if you don't actually mean defund the police, then maybe don't have your slogan be defund the police. M maybe <laughs> um so I I just I, I just do just want to throw that in that uh, honestly the left when it comes to like um actually like spreading their ideas and you know optics they are actually the, the they're where we are pretty bad shorthand for a collection of ideas okay so if we accept that's true then criticizing no politics in games or keep politics out of games is a similar thing it's a shorthand. So what most people the thing is is that um, when people say keep politics, okay, so like when people say defund the police, but then you actually like get them to say like what they mean. Generally, it's like okay, that's not that bad. But when people say keep politics out of my games, and then you say, well, that's stupid. Um, what do you mean keep politics out of your games? Everything is political. I mean, I've, I've never, I, generally, whenever, honestly, whenever I actually, like, anytime I see people saying, like, keep politics out of my games or whatever, 
and um, and I say like, wait, what politics? What what are the politics that you're that you're speaking about? I, I've on, I've actually like never even get a response because they know that they know that when when you ask them to even like when when you ask them to like go even a step further, you know that like when they actually start talking about what they're talking about, and it comes like. And, and they start and they have to say that they're talking about like you know gay characters or trans characters or women being in games then they're just going to come off as bigoted so like yeah like, like, like that's the difference here is that when people clarify their positions on defund the police um it's like oh yeah that's not that bad right yeah maybe um uh like like maybe stop over militarizing the police force or whatever or um, start training cops better which actually yeah, i'm pretty sure you'd need more funds for that but that's neither here or there but then when you when people when you ask someone who says keep uh politics out of games when you ask them to clarify their position that doesn't do them any favors so i don't if you want to say that keep politics out of your games is just a bad um like slogan for uh stop propagandizing your games that doesn't at least for me that doesn't make me that doesn't make me view them any more favorably who talk about keep politics out of my games um mean is i don't want partisanship in my video games i don't want propaganda also yeah like uh, i i do also just want to say that um like i think a lot a lot of times these people also they a lot of times they just don't they they haven't really thought through what they're saying <laughs> um like i think to them politics is that is like um like gay or trans people being in in uh in games like i don't i don't think that they've actually like thought through it enough to realize that um that like uh like i don't know playing a call of duty game where you're fighting in world war ii I don't think they've actually thought it through that much to where they realize that that's also political. <laughs> I think that it's just like in their minds, like playing as a gay character, like, oh no, that is political. That is political, like propaganda. I don't want preachiness, right? But because all three of those factors involved, they just shorthand it to keep politics out of games, which previously speech is supposed to be specific. Unfortunately, in 2020, speech is not specific. You're supposed to be able to understand a whole bunch of coded stuff, including when literally means literally and when literally means figuratively. This is the age we're living in. It won't be forever, but we have to navigate it now. So that's one thing that has caused me to rethink my view on this statement. But mm -hmm. the other, is an element that I've been struggling with very heavily over The Last of Us 2. Yes, that game continues oh, yes. to fucking haunt me. Because I admit, I have found a lot of the alleged dialogue surrounding that game incredibly disturbing. Because... Dude, I don't know. Ex I, hopefully she's going to start saying some, like, <laughs> some good things here. Um, uh, Although, I don't know. She doesn't seem like that. She doesn't seem like a like a bad lady at least I, I just for my first impression of her but like oh my gosh the reaction to the last of us 2 has been pathetic like just flat out pathetic like all these people who like okay but i don't know last last of us 2 spoiler warning if you haven't played it don't watch this video i don't know how much i, I don't know how much spoilers um she's gonna get into but i'm gonna get into some spoilers right now but like all of these people who like like genuinely like hate neil druckmann or i don't know shannon woodward or who's the lady that that played abby because no because like shannon woodward played um i think she played dina who played abby i'm trying to think of her name uh i don't remember her name but i know like people like genuinely hate like the actress that played abby it's like dude they made a game that you didn't like like neil Druckmann didn't actually uh beat your dad's face in with uh with a golf club 
they just tried their best to make a game and that game that they made just didn't work for you it's not that serious like not the the reaction uh to this game has just been absolutely pathetic like it's it's less jedi levels to be to to be frank with you um and like all the people saying that like oh my gosh like i the game wasn't preachy I don't, I honestly don't know how you could, I, I mean, I, I guess this part of the, of, of what I'm saying is like kind of subjective, but like, I don't know like how the game was preachy. Like our game, like our games just not allowed to tackle like, uh, like, I don't know, like trans characters and, uh, and like gay experiences. Like, are they just not allowed to tackle them? I, like, because I, I, I don't know how you, could, like, think the game was preachy. Like, it was just the thing where Ellie was just happened to be gay. And honestly, like, she didn't, like, it was only, like, one part where um the, I don't know, like, the, the sandwich guy uh was, like, um where, like, the sandwich guy uh was, like, bigoted towards her. But, it, like, that wasn't even just a thing where they just did it to, um where, where they did that just so that they could preach about it when the guy did that he did that so that joel could have a reason to intervene and then that can cause that interaction between joel and ellie so like even that one even like at that point uh that had like a narrative purpose to it uh and like lev there wasn't there were like no preachy moments with lev at least that i could think that i can think of i I mean, obviously, aside from the fact that her, that her mom was, or his, or his mom was a uh, was was abusive towards her, but like, but like, obviously, like with the Ellie, uh, with Ellie and the sandwich guy, like there was the part where like she was like, I don't want your bigot sandwich or whatever or whatever she said, and like people got really mad about that. Um, like that's the only thing that like maybe I could see, I could see like being kind of preachy, but again that whole interaction had a narrative purpose to it like lev and um and her uh uh what's his uh what's and her mom or his mom um that whole thing that had narrative purpose because um like that like i mean obviously like that whole interaction causes lev to uh leave and go try and uh and and uh and be with his mom and you know that causes uh abby to go after him and then for owen and uh what's her face i don't know the the, the wife <laughs> or whatever um and them to stay there like all of these things have narrative purpose and like they're not just there to preach at you at least from my perspective like i i honestly i i, I didn't think the last of us two was preachy right out of the gate the opinions about that game were fights that men were having with other men about a game involving female leads. And that's immediately a sign of a problem. Like, name me one really prominent voice uh, who is female who got, you know, their ideas elevated with that whole thing. It's been Troy Baker and Neil Druckmann like what? and Jim Sterling and uh, you know a bunch of other male voices you know anita sarkeesian and and company did one podcast about it and they seem to run away in terror of the whole thing women have been really sidelined in this debate but the other I guess thing that's true. that sort of haunted me but i don't really know that many um uh yeah well i mean i guess i don't know that many um that many female like content like prominent content creators that really gets in deep with all this culture war stuff um i mean i guess i'll just i'll, I'll i think it's a problem that i don't really know that many like female content creators that cover games so i guess that's actually a problem in and of itself but yeah i, I guess it is kind of sad that like the quarterings and the and the geeks and gamers of the world have uh I guess kind of um are the most uh like prominent uh people when it comes to covering 
this culture war stuff in games is how ham-handedly propagandistic that game is and it made me realize that that's the sort of thing that i just don't agree people but are talking about we'll see what she sort of we'll, we'll, we'll see what she has to say here. games always exist Wait, is she a game on, dev on... games uh, about and i'm gonna sort of go deep divey game dev here Deep type. I don't know if she's actually a game developer. Always exist on on sort of the head of a pin. Part of the metaphor. I don't know what that means. Game narratives are hard to design because they're 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 harder yeah. to design than linear narratives because you have to involve choice probably somehow. Now, a studio like Naughty Dog sidesteps that by creating fairly linear stories that the player just plays through, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you insert interactive moments into a story that's on rails you have to do so with extreme caution if a player is doing anything more than controlling the action sequences i refer to it as basically being a stunt coordinator for a movie in in sort of interactive form uh, which is what uncharted is uh for instance i i always i mean feel that's like that, kind that of I'm true the stunt coordinator on a movie so the narrative's locked but i get to determine all the cool action sequences that's how i relate to uncharted that's actually um, that's actually a cool that's way to think about it different than a game like mass effect or, or dragon age and and um i've never played matters. those games but because I expectations know. going in those are, are choice-based really games i'm less bothered when you know nate and elena are fighting and i have no control over what's going on because I don't. That, that's not a part I expect to have control. But in something like Dragon Age, where you know it becomes tell it becomes tell don't show in a character like Krem, I feel cheated because I really think Krem is cool as a character. I wish they had given him more to do than literally stand there and be trans for the game. I mean, if they really wanted to be. Uh, if they really wanted to be storytellers instead of, you know, creating sort of a political prop in, in Dragon Age Inquisition with Krem, a really bold step would I have never been played to... Dragon Age Inquisition, so I don't know how, um, I don't know how, uh, I don't know if I would agree with this assessment or not, but I mean, that's, a, that is an interesting perspective of, um, of, uh, of having an issue with like trans or gay characters only be used only being used as props um like actually um like earlier uh, i think it was yesterday i think like john boyega he uh he kind of went he went off on uh, on disney for basically uh him believing that a lot of the you know um uh poc and um and i guess gay characters i don't know i honestly like I don't remember if there were any like gay or trans characters in the Star Wars trilogy. I don't think there were, but basically, at least POC characters not really being given much to do in the Star Wars trilogy, and that they were just kind of placed there as props. Which, I mean, I don't know if necessarily uh, Disney had malicious intent behind uh, them doing that, but at the end of the day, I guess I kind of agree with them because um at least like the two prominent um uh uh like characters that i can think of are like finn and was it rose was that kelly marie trans character i don't even remember but yeah like i mean they were kind of they like those characters were giving were given nothing to do and like john boyega's character finn like that is that was like the honestly probably the most interesting character that they that they set up in the in the force awakens like a, a stormtrooper um changing his ways and seeing how how uh, how cringe the empire is like that's a really interesting character and yeah like they did nothing with him like literally nothing like he was just they he, he basically just ran around and yelled ray sometimes and yeah, like I think that is such a shame. Um, but I don't know if it's so much that Disney were just like, okay, we'll we'll use his his blackness to to get um 
to get brownie points, uh, but we actually don't like uh, black people, so we're not going to give him much to do. I don't know if it necessarily, I don't know, I don't know that I necessarily think that that is the reason why the character was handled so poorly, as much as I just don't think that they had a plan um, in creating this new, this sequel trilogy. Like, I, I, I think that that's probably more to do with it. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't, I don't necessarily know if that really matters because the outcome of this, uh, the outcome of, of, um, uh, of what happened was that, yeah, like at least, uh, the POC characters like Rose and Finn weren't given much to do. Like that is the outcome. So yeah, I mean, if she's going to say that, um, that maybe I, I maybe if she, if uh, she's gonna say that like Lev and Ellie were just treated as props or 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 Lev and Dina if she's gonna say that they were just treated as props I don't know if I I just don't agree with that at all but well let's see Krem a romance option I would have preferred that um, I thought Krem was one of the better support characters like non party characters. Uh, I would have liked that option for, well, I don't know what Krem's sexuality is, but, um, you know, I would prefer that for Krem for the, um, the Inquisitor that whatever Krem's attracted to, right? Um, now that's, having characters have sexual orientations, I don't consider that political. I consider that, well, I don't consider that partisan politics. That's just life right You're i actually true. enjoy in the dragon age games that there are some party members of of both of both genders who are not available for romance you know you've got aveline you've got vivienne you've got varick they have relationships in one form or another they're not interested in you As yeah i think because like oh my gosh i played assassin's creed odyssey and you could you could literally do the you could do the um the 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 googly woogly. Uh I don't know why I said I you you know what I mean when I say that. I shouldn't have said that, but you know what I mean when I say that. Uh you could do it with literally every character it felt like. And it's like, yeah, like if you wanna actually even in a choice based game, like if you wanna have like if you wanna be able to craft uh narratives around like real relationships and have them be impactful, like I do think that you should have limits to uh to to the relationships that you can have just so that you can ensure that whichever route the character goes like the, it actually tells a compelling story as as the main character i like that that isn't making a political point that is just that's life you know just because you're the starring role doesn't mean every character throws themselves at you that that's that breaks the immersion for me um, when everybody's like trying to get in my pants in a game, I'm like, whoa, 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 this is weird. And some of them come on very strong because that's not life. But the problem with, you know, Krem is he's a cool character. He doesn't do nearly as much as I think he should be doing based on the coolness of the character. And there seemed to be something very static about him that felt like, Either Bioware was not not ready to go there yet, which is disappointing from an artistic perspective, or Krem was never created as a character that was a whole person. He was put in there to be the trans character so they could say they had a trans character in the game. And that, to me, is the difference between a game that thoroughly... I guess, but like, I don't... I, I obviously again I haven't played Dragon Age but like not every character is like like not every character in a game or movie or show is going to have a prominent role like I mean I guess like like if a white side character doesn't get much to do like are we just going to go like Oh, did you just put that character in so that you could say that you have a white character? Like, I don't know. I, I guess I feel like... 
I feel like part of um, at least my goal in normalizing, you know, trans characters, gay characters, uh, POC characters in uh, in 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 entertainment is just like I want to get to a point where people see a, like a black character, for example, in a movie, a TV show. Or, or a gay character or a trans character, like where we just see them in movies and we don't even give it a second thought, you know? Like, I want to get to that point one day. Um, so, I mean, I, so yeah, like, I guess, like, like that's the thing. Like, I, I, I will say, like, I think my problem with, um, with Star Wars and, you know, the stuff that John Boyega was saying was that, um, my main problem with how that all was handled was that Finn was like, uh, he was, made or at least like he was his character was like built up to be like really interesting in the force awakens and then that was just never followed through like that was my main problem with the with star wars um i don't know like if there's like a side character that's just introduced as a side character and then they they just remain a side character i don't necessarily know if i would have that much of a problem with that um i don't know but again, I haven't played Dragon Age Inquisition. Resist, resist exists in the realm of art that is just telling a story, and everything kind of coexists in a kind of organic way. And a game that is ham-handedly political. And I'd I'd like to make a suggestion for an amendment to keep your po- your politics out of games. To keep your ham-handed politics out of games. Tell a good story first. But again, defund the police doesn't mean defund the police. So. I can't complain about imprecise statements anymore. This is the paradigm we're living in. But the other That's t- true. I would love Oh my um mm, mm, I would love it if all of these people that say keep politics out of my games were just more honest and said keep women out of my games, keep trans people out of my games cuz that's what they mean. That's literally what they mean cuz if you remember like like back when like um when like overwatch or whatever when like the tracer character or whatever was like introduced or or like because that's the thing like they say this they they bring this up when like a hero shooter just introduces uh like these types of characters in their games when it's like it's literally it's just a hero shooter why would you care (laughs) why 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 would you care like, th- these are just characters that you just play as. It's not even, like, a story. Or, I guess, doesn't Overwatch have a story? I don't know. I don't play Overwatch. Um, I don't play a lot of games. You, I might be exposing myself as a fake gamer in this video, but whatever. <laughs> um, uh, but it, that's literally what it is. It's like, they just don't want to play as these types of characters. Um, so, yeah, I agree. I wish they would be more honest. Thing. Happened in The Last of Us 2. Mm-hmm. And a single line in The Last of Us 2 frame... Is it going to be the bigot sandwich line? Watch. It's going to be the bigot sandwich line. The whole game for me. It made me incapable of seeing the game in any way but the way I got locked into. From- if this is... If it's the bigot sandwich line... Oh my god. Like, okay. I'll I'll wait. Uh, if I'll see if that's line. actually and the people line. People who on. are we'll see. trying so hard, not anymore, they finally gave up because I told them off. But people were trying so hard to force me to like the game that they suggested that maybe the experience of playing it in front of, you know, a Twitch audience colored my view of the game. No, I, okay, is- I will say this. Like if you just Okay. If you just didn't like the game and you didn't think the game was good, like if you just didn't think it told a good story, that's totally fine and valid. But it's like, if you didn't like the game because there were, um, because there were, um, like trans characters or lesbian characters or you had to play as a woman. Um, or because Abby was, like, too muscular. I, like, if you're one of those people, and, you know, you can come into the comment section and say that, no, I just didn't like it because I felt like the politics were just too ham-fisted and 
and blah, 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 blah. And maybe that's true. And maybe that's a valid stance. Um, but I, and obviously I can't read. I can't read your mind to see if you're actually a, a bigot. Um, so if you are a bigot, then you know you're a bigot, so you know I'm talking about you. So that, I guess that's, like, yeah, so, like, I guess I can't, like, I guess, like, now a lot of people will probably, like, comment, or, or like, I, I'll see a lot of people saying that, like, no, it's not that I don't want to play as those characters, or it's not that I don't think those characters should be in these games, but I just don't think that they should be, uh, I just don't think that uh, it should be, I, I think it should just be done in a more elo eloquent way, and I don't think it should be shoved in your face. Like, I know a lot of people say that, um, and that's the thing, like, that might be a valid perspective, you know, when you're judging things on a game by game, a game by game basis, um, but, like, also, like, I'm sure, like, I, I, you know, a lot of people are just using that as an excuse to mask their, their bigotry, so, I guess if you're a bigot, then you know I'm talking about you you know, unfair and quite frankly insulting. I've been doing, um, you know, opinion about games for too goddamn long to suggest that I suddenly become a different person because of an audience. But the what actually, actually put me off was the bigot sandwiches line. I did it. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> I was okay. Now I can talk about this bigot sandwich line. Oh my god! Oh my! Like oh, all of these people, and maybe it's not this lady, but all of these people. Oh my gosh! These SJWs—they're so sensitive. They get offended by everything. One line in this video game that, like, when I heard the bigot sandwiches line, I was just like. Oh, that's pretty funny. And then I literally didn't think about it again. Like, that bigot sandwiches line, it was just, like, such a non-thing for me. It just, it didn't, it, it didn't, it really impact me in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> like, the fact that so many people, like, that they just, when Ellie said that, they just broke down. You know, they... They, uh, they they were holding their dual shock fours. Their hands were trembling. They were like, "How could, how could Ellie say that? How 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 could Ellie be one of them, one of those SJWs? That's how, how could she how how could how could she be so mean to this this actual bigot? Ah, uh, I can't I can't believe it. I just." The, the amount of, of people who broke down just because Ellie didn't want to take a sandwich from a guy who, like, interrupted a romantic moment between her and Dina. <laughs> because they were, because they were two girls kissing. Oh, oh my gosh. Like, the fact that I, like, it's just one of those things. Like, it, it's that and... And people obsessing over the fact that Abby is, like, muscular or whatever. Like, those are the two things that I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? It's like, like, how are, how are just, like, how are these things just affecting you to this degree? I just don't understand it. And it's like, I don't know. If you're getting, like, super, uh, super mad because... Ellie didn't accept a sandwich from a bigot and called it a bigot sandwich. I feel like maybe you're a bigot? I don't... Is that a fair thing to maybe suggest? I... If, if you're... I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, may, maybe I'm out of line there. <laughs> because... Explain yourself. Game really forces you to try to see Ellie's point of view there instead of the game making it clear that what? Ellie was intolerant there 
and ungracious when uh, I don't know what what, it, what the guy's name um, Seth or something like that tried. Yeah, to he's like. You don't even remember his name because it was such a non like it was like such a like a non important <laughs> moment of the game. You fairly sincerely tried to apologize for being an ass the night before. She she is not forgiving, and I thought that was going to be a major character point of this is this is where Ellie's at, right? She's so traumatized that she can't forgive, and that was going to be a flaw. And it, it wasn't. It was just a stupid line. Also, that is a flaw in her... Like, yeah, like, you could also see that as a flaw. Actually, she's opening my mind, right? Like, she... You know what? Yes, you know what? That is actually... That bigot sandwich line. That is the, uh... That is the most pivotal, uh, moment in the game for you. Because it sets you up for this as Ellie... Being this unforgiving monster because she didn't accept a sandwich from a guy who, from a guy who, <laughs> who, did, who interrupted her dance with Dina. She is this unforgiving monster. And that is why once she gets to the point where she actually forgives Abby and actually forgives Joel. Aha. You can see how far her character has come. No, no, it's just a, it's just like, yeah, I'm sorry. If like, okay, I don't know. I'm a Mexican. All right. If, if like I'm dancing, I don't know. I, you know, I'm dancing with some, with, uh, I don't know. You know what? Cause I, w I was going to say with a white girl, but I look pretty white. So I don't think anybody would really care if I'm dancing with like an Asian person. Right. And then. Some like, and then like, I don't know, we're at some kind of, uh, we're, we're, we're at her, we're at her birthday party, right? And like her uncle comes over and she's like, what are you doing? You can't, you can't dance with, uh, with my niece. I don't, and interracial dancing is not a thing that I like to see. And, you know, me and her, we were really hitting it off. The next day, if he comes at me and he's like, uh, uh, hey dude, I have a, I have a sandwich for you. Um, is this sandwich, are we cool now? Because I'm giving you this sandwich? I'm like, I would, I, I think I would be, <laughs> I think I would be justified in being like, what? No, leave me alone. <laughs> don't, I don't want your, I don't want your sandwich. <laughs> like, that's not, <laughs> it's not, a, <laughs> like, that's a totally reasonable reaction. <laughs> like, if someone is, like, an actual bigot. Like, just not wanting to associate with them is a totally reasonable, reasonable reaction. Like, what do you... T uh, I don't know. Lineup, what have you got there? Bigot sandwiches. And the the Asian... Also, did she... I don't even think she... Did Ellie say that to him? I think she just said that to, um... To... To the lady. The leader of the compound. I don't remember her name. What is her name? It's like Mary or something. I don't know. I don't even think. I don't even. Yeah, I don't even think she said it to to the guy. I think like whenever she was. Uh, I think she just like she was just kind of quiet because it was just like an awkward moment. And then I think the leader took the sandwich. Like I don't even think she said it to him. Dude, Jesse goes. Oh, they smell pretty good. So the guy who was probably more frequently a um. A, a victim of bigotry being an Asian dude in Montana. Uh, sorry, Montana, Wyoming, Wyoming. Uh, <laughs> both, both would, both would fit this point. He's cooler about it than she is. But okay, the bigot sandwich is held. So that framed the whole thing, right? That even calling people bad names is considered super bad in this game right nobody stops ellie i mean if marlene there'd be a more uh, marlene is her marlene name going you cut that shit out and there there was sort of a back and forth that i think would have would have not locked me in to a particular framing on the games that that primed me for what i mean comes okay next. like even if you even if you think that that scene made ellie look really bad I don't know if, like, a character having flaws is, like, a negative in the game. And, like, 
throughout at least my entire experience with the last of us part two and by the way i didn't um i don't know if this matters at all but i didn't actually play the game um i don't have a ps4 so i like i watched like a cutscene. i think it was like an 11 hour cutscene movie where like i don't know some guy he like he cut together all of the like cutscenes and like relevant gameplay bits into this like 11 hour movie and so i went that i watched that so i didn't actually play the game but but yeah i don't know like throughout my entire time you know watching the game um like ellie was incredibly flawed like i like i did not like her um her like uh her i i really didn't enjoy seeing her um her descend into uh being this vengeful you know murderous uh character um like that 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 was something that i didn't enjoy but that doesn't like finding the protagonist flawed i don't necessarily know if that's a bad thing or yeah like i don't i don't think that that's a bad thing and maybe maybe Neil Druckmann in that instance was trying to make Ellie flawed, you know. Like I don't necessarily see if that's I I don't I don't think that that's like propagandizing, especially when you literally just said that Jesse wasn't all that bothered by it. So it's like how is it propaganda when they're literally having another character trying to like um trying to uh. Uh, make the situation better by making a joke about the sandwich like i don't know how, if if this were if this were like propaganda then like the then the guy would have been like he would have been like banished from the settlement because he because he was a bigot like if that if this game was trying to be propaganda that's probably that's what they would have done but honestly i just thought that that like the 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 scene was just kind of realistic because it's like yeah if 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 you're a victim of bigotry you're not just going to be like I, I don't know at least at least for me like if i were a vic if i was a victim of bigotry in a situation like i would i would just disassociate from the bigot i wouldn't like i i just not want anything to do with them um but yeah, I don't know. It primed me to be extremely sensitive to any slights <clears throat> regarding uh, identifiable and immutable characteristics. And then later in the game, the game forces me to beat Nora to death as Ellie. You're playing as Ellie, and you actually have to push the button to beat Nora to death. Yeah. Now, Nora is black. Wait. So why wasn't that, you know pipe or whatever ellie uses to beat this woman to death a bigot pipe because wait no what are you talking about okay seth what he did that was wrong was he um he he broke up ellie and dina dancing because or kissing because they are they they're two women ellie when she beat nora she was not beating nora because she was black she was beating nora because she was you know um she was an accomplice in the, in the in the murder of joel do you not see how these are two completely different situations like it's not a bigoted action ellie uh beating nora to death uh that's not a bigoted action because she's not beating nora because she's black she's beating nora because she wants revenge which is a, it's just a sh that's uh you know I, I as i was watching it i didn't like seeing nora i didn't like seeing ellie do that you know um but yeah these are just not comparable situations at all <laughs> that was racialized violence that it forces the player to participate in and i don't no. think i would have been <laughs> so framed to see it that way had the game not thrown the whole idea of bigot sandwiches in my face early on i saw more 
the um I, you know disposable asian man stereotype oh he's not exciting it's okay to kick him to the curb because i find him boring adina treats jesse wait, what? it made me more aware what of oh my gosh what is <laughs> this is insane how is she like i i'm sorry I just find it insane that you can take like such a like a tiny moment in a game and then use that as an excuse to like see all of these weird like all of all of these weird things in the rest of the game. It's like I mean did we ever I don't even I don't think we ever found out exactly why Jesse and um Adina broke up. I don't, yeah, I don't think they ever said why. I could be wrong, but there's, there, at least from what I remember, there was, like, no indication that, there, there was just no indication that that's why they broke up. Again, with, um, with the guy interrupting Ellie and Dina kissing, that is a very clearly, like, almost objectively, like, the reason why he did that was because he was bigoted you can't like that's not the case for the other situations i don't this is i this is a really this is a really bad argument that she's pre presenting right here of dina being a real jewish american princess stereotype with the using people as pawns and being manipulative and 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 not very grown up or upfront. She is just throwing out all of the all of these um, ideas um, out. She is extrapolating a lot here. <laughs> she is she has what she has done is she has a she she has a t-shirt right. She there's like a little there's like a there's like a there's like a string coming out of the t-shirt and she is just. She has yanked that <laughs> that that cloth, and she is just unraveling a lot of stuff here that I don't I don't think is I just don't think is valid. <laughs> I this is crazy. I don't even know what to say. And telling a lot of lies of omission. Um, the fact that um, you know Isaac, he's lifted up as this big military leader. He eats an apple and then gets shot in the head. I mean, there goes another black character down the tubes to advance the plot of the white women and i and then of course you've got lev going on about dragons in one scene there is absolutely nothing in the seraphim that have anything to do with dragons and here's this asian is she gonna say that going on about dragons you know like, i don't re i don't remember him it, talking about dragons i'm gonna be real with I you care nearly as much if I hadn't gotten creamed with the bigot sandwiches earlier in the so, game. So, is she going to say that... I mean, she's basically saying that... Um, because of one SJW moment, I have been forced to become the ultimate SJW. Like, that's basically what she's saying. I... Like, that's just... I don't... I don't know. It's it, This feels like... <laughs> this just feels like... She's gone. If you if you can't beat him, join him. Now I'm going to become the the SJW. Like this is just this is just so weird. I don't I don't it, even know. Probably what to not. Say. I would have chuckled, found it kind of ham handed and awkward, but hey, it's zombie fiction. It's all ham handed and awkward, right? But the fact that the game forced me into a a a, a lens, right? They forced me into a mindset by being so heavy-handed with that bigot sandwiches thing uh, off the top. Um, and and it colored everything else. And that's what I think the issue really is. And the average person has issues, you know, finding these granular details and identifying them and, and unpacking them. And that's why I'm attempting to do this. That You haven't... See, that's the thing here. She hasn't unpacked anything. She's like... She's like taking the box and she's like just without looking at what's inside, 
she's just like thrown the the items of the box out and then she's put her own items inside like that's that's what she's doing here because like i okay obviously art is subjective but i don't i they're like she is just coming to the most insane conclusions here that i am just I, I just don't know how you could come to these conclusions. People want to be able to just judge characters in a work of fiction as characters in a work of fiction. They don't want a forced lens put on things. That's fine for movies. That's, you know, fine for even TV shows. You know, we, we tune into uh, Lena Dunham's Girls. We know what we're getting. Which is why some of us didn't tune in that often. I don't know what but, that is. But um, with games, there's much more. There's much more expectation of that not being stuffed down. Wait, why? Why? How are? How is a game wanting to tell its story any different from a from a movie wanting to tell its story? Like that, I don't, I don't see why you would, why you would uh, accept that in a movie and not in a game. That's really weird. Like she was, she was talking earlier about how linear and uh, about how linear the Naughty Dog games are, and yeah, it's true. Like Naughty Dog, they have a specific story that they want to tell you, and um, and they tell it to you. Like you're not Ellie, right? You're not making decisions for Ellie. She is her own character. So, like, I don't... That's really weird. I don't know why this would be... This isn't... You're okay with this in movies, but not in games? Somebody's throat so pedantically in a AAA title. And whether you think that's right or wrong, the... And again, they don't throw it... Like, it's not shoved in your face. It's like one line <laughs> in the entire game. I mean, I don't, I, I don't remember it even being brought up again until like, until the end when, um, when you, I think at the end, it's when you like see Joel, like getting in between them when you, when you see like the, the cutscene at the end, like, I think that's like the only time it's brought up. It's brought up in the beginning and then in the end, like, I don't think there's ever like an issue with ellie being with dina like that's i don't think that's ever brought up as an issue again in the entire game i it's not shoved down your throat at all it, it was it, it was like a throwaway line and then because of that you've then like gone out and tried to look way into other situations the, the player base has been conditioned to expect much more, even by the Last of Us franchise itself, right? Much more gray area, many more options about what to think about a series of choices, what to think about an ending. I mean, the reason sure. the first game is so beloved by a lot of people is that the final choice that, that Joel makes to save Ellie... Well, that's the thing. Like, if you want to see, um, if you want to look at Ellie's, like, Ellie not you know accepting uh the guy's sandwich if you want to see that as being ellie having a character flaw then sure go ahead and view it as that that's that could still be a gray area like you don't you know um like i this is this is just a really weird thing to to get hung up over <laughs> is complicated and it is very much a moral gray area and we could have a debate um back and forth about the um y you know the the rightness of joel's choice there but instead uh -huh. of the game allowing us to have that extended um interactivity with with the the, the no, material you, can, you know what you, we can have a conversation a really about ellie's choice in the second game and i yeah, think that's we can still have a caused a huge amount of dissonance and we can still yeah we can have a conversation about about ellie calling um about ellie 
not accepting that guy's sandwich. I mean, if you want, I personally think it's a totally valid reaction to have. But if you want to have a conversation about that, hey, look at that. We can have a conversation about that. That's not... <laughs> I don't... I, I don't know. I guess... Uh, I mean, I guess, like, I think if we actually had a conversation about it, there... I feel like you, like... I feel like people super hard, like, defending the guy for being a bigot. I don't know, maybe you wouldn't come off looking that great, but, I mean, we can still have a conversation about it. It can still be a gray area if you want, you know? I don't... I, I just... Yeah, like, I don't understand why this is such a... Like, I, I don't understand why this throwaway line has just tainted the rest of the game for you. And that's why people reacted so strongly to it. You know, anything that causes people to think too hard about something, you're you're really you're really risking dissonance, which means you're throwing people out of the game, out of the experience of being immersed in a game. Wait, anything that causes uh people to think too hard. I mean I don't know if I have much sympathy for them there, <laughs> you know? Meaning the entire experience of playing a video game is going to be much less satisfying. You know, the opposite of that is something like A Ghost of Tsushima, where you don't really realize how... I haven't played or seen Ghost of, of Tsushima. So, inherently I don't know. progressive the game is. First of all, I mean, is there a single white person in the game? In a game made in the West? No. They assumed the audience wouldn't care. They were right. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. It, you know, it shows uh, Asian people not as, you know, a, a, mono, a, a monolith. It's not all Asian people think the same. It was based on, you know, a fictionalized version of a historical conflict between the Mongols and, and, and the, um, the Japanese. I don't remember if they were actually yeah, called wait. the Japanese back then. Am I forgetting? Um, she never, nobody ever brought up, and she never brought up any criticisms of The Last of Us Part Two, Dragon Age, or Mass Effect that like all trans people think the same, or that all, or that all Asians think the same. Like I don't know why that's a. Oh, the Last of Us Two never did that. She never even said that they did that, so that's a weird thing to say. I don't know. But um, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Also, like, why are like. I, I guess, okay, like, this happened, this has been, like, a bit of a trend since, like, Captain Marvel. Whenever there's, like, an, it's been, it's so weird. Okay, I guess it's, like, the only the third time it's happened, but it's just really weird. So, like, when Captain Marvel came out, um, like, and it's, like, this SJW cult, like, culturally, uh, uh, like, culturally, uh, I don't know. Uh, what's the the word I'm thinking of has just blanked um controversial that's the word I'm thinking of like it's like whenever like a controversial movie comes out that or a movie that's deemed to be like an SJW propaganda movie they people then like take this other movie and like weirdly like like pit them against each other and it's like like when Captain Marvel came out people were like Oh uh, no, uh, Alita Battle Angel is the is way better than Captain Marvel, and it's like, okay, but like, why are you comparing the two? It's like, no, this is the real movie, the the real female lead movie. It's like, okay, but like, there's no real reason to like pit them against each other. Like, I don't know if you think Alita Battle Angel is good, that's cool and all, but I don't know what that really has to do with captain marvel and then like when um when birds of prey came out and by the way i still haven't seen birds of prey so i have no opinion on it but and nor have i seen sonic the hedgehog but yeah like when when birds of prey came out all of these like anti-sjw people just like completely fabricated this feud between birds of prey and sonic the hedgehog that was, like, the most baffling <laughs> one to me. It's like, these movies literally have nothing to do with each other. And these people, like, created this feud between the two. It's like, 
I don't know, like, if you like Sonic, that's cool, but I don't... <clears throat> I don't know what that has to do with Birds of Prey. And now with The Last of Us 2, they're like, Ugh, Ghosts of Tsushima is, is, is the way better game than The Last of Us 2. Gosh, I, Ghosts of Tsushima completely um, poops all over The Last of Us 2. And it's just like, and I guess with this one, it's like a little more understandable since they're both Sony um, first party exclusives. But it's like, it's like, from what I understand about Ghost of Tsushima, it's like an open world game that doesn't even really try to tell, like, uh, tell, like, a compelling story. Like, I think it's mostly just focused on gameplay. But yeah, like, it's an open world game that does isn't really that isn't as narrative focused as the last of us two like they're not even really comparable in any real way at least from what at least from from what i've heard i haven't actually played it so and it's like yeah if you like ghost of tsushima that's cool but i don't know what that has to do with the last of us part two <laughs> like i don't i don't know i mean yeah like if you want to talk about like first party exclusives then yeah then that would be like a understandable that would be like an understandable point to pit them against each other but it's just like it's just so weird that anytime there's like a controversial movie culturally you know because of sjw-ness or whatever people then like gravitate to some other thing to be like this is the real one that's good i don't know it's just this weird thing that i've noticed but yeah, here, here she goes doing it <laughs> all asian people do not think alike that's Sadly, something that people in the West still need to be told. Um, so, you know, there was that. that I mean, that but is that's not a joke. That's not a thing that The Last of Us Two is guilty of. I don't. I don't know. Where the next door neighbors, the cons, were Laotian, and Dale was always, "Are you Japanese or Chinese?" And no matter how many times Khan said, "I'm Laotian." Dale would say, are you Japanese or Chinese, right? Indicating the ignorance of America, some Americans about Asia. Um, but then you have women over 40 doing things all over the place to the point that I cast my own version of Tsushima as the Golden Girls. Um, Masako is Dorothy. Yuriko is Rose. Uh, Tomoe... Sorry, I was rudely interrupted. Um... Yeah, let's continue with the video. Is, uh, is Sophia. Because <clears throat> she's she Estelle Getty was significantly younger than the other women in the cast when the Golden Girls was shot. And Yuna's always, you know, flashing back. So to, is she I comparing characters from Ghost of Tsushima to the Golden Girls? And saying that, like, like all like the Asian cast in Ghost of Tsushima were, like, significantly different from each other? It's like that's not a thing that The Last of Us was guilty of. I don't, I don't know what's like the point in bringing this up. So you know, it's like picture it, Tsushima, you know, 1270, 1272 or something like that. But the fact that there are enough older women to do that in a game and only have to fudge it slightly, you don't see that much. Not as main characters, and you know, some of them are bisexual, and you know, some of them defy gender roles and all this really cool stuff. But do we think about it? While we're playing the game, no, we've bought in. We may have a moment of, isn't this cool? But the purpose of the game is not to convert us to a particular way of... Okay. So, she she starts this video by saying, When people say that they don't want politics in their games, they're not saying that they don't want politics in their games. What they're saying is that they just don't want politics shoved in my face. And then now we're at 19 minutes and, you know, 38 seconds into the video. And she's literally saying that she doesn't want to politics in, in, in her games. She doesn't want to think about politics when she's playing her games. Okay. Thinking the purpose of the game is to just sort of take us on a journey and have really cool conversations about, for instance, I have this ongoing um, discussion with 
with with somebody in Twitter DMs about whether the criticism from the uncle and from what's his name, uh, Ishikawa, the 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 bowman, um, whether the ongoing criticisms of Jin are dissonant or not, whether there shouldn't have been different responses depending on how samurai or how um, stealth, like like thief mode of a player plays. And, you know, the 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 guy I'm talking to is like, no, it's it's dissonant. I, I've been playing strict straight up honorably. I've been running in, just taking on all comers, being open, totally doing the samurai code. Um, I'm not using the stealth much. And I'm like, I took it as no matter what you do, they're older people, they're stuck in their ways, they're gonna criticize you no matter how how good you do. That's the point. Is there a right answer to this? No, there isn't. Th there's, there's no firm thing, one or the other, and that's what makes it interesting. No one can be right, so no one can be wrong, and you learn a lot about a person through discussions that are not so black or white. So, I mean, uh, I guess, I mean, I don't know. I haven't played Ghost of Tsushima, but so like maybe that's an interesting story beat, but it's like, what, you, I mean, The Last of Us 2, like that doesn't, that didn't have to be black or white either. In fact, uh, like not everything that Ellie does, at least in my opinion, like I don't think that um, Naughty Dog was intending for everything that Ellie does. I don't think they were intending for you to automatically be uh, on her side just because she is Ellie, just because she is the main character. I think you were meant to um, to criticize or you know uh, be like, oh, oh, Ellie, I don't know, I don't know about that one, Ellie, I don't know about that one. I don't know what you're doing there, Ellie. Like, I think you were meant to be doing that. So, I mean, I personally think she was justified for the bigot sandwich thing. Um, but like, if you didn't, then that's cool. <laughs> like, okay, that that you have an interesting perspective on the character, and. I mean, for all I know, maybe that, maybe, um, Neil Druckmann, uh, maybe he, that's what he wanted. Maybe he, maybe he wanted at that point for you to start, uh, doubting Ellie and, you know, stop, um, necessarily being on her side in every situation. Like a lot of The Last of Us 2 is, a, is a very much a gray area as well. So like, I don't, like, again, it's, it just it's like it's like people are just like presented with something that makes them uncomfortable and then they go and then that just immediately drives them to like think that it's somebody trying to shove po like some politics down their throats you know I don't know it's just a really weird thing. And I really think that those those discussions that happen in video games like that are the reason people become such obsessive fans of things. And the minute you pull something like, no, what Joel did was wrong, you break that spell and people get really angry and really upset because you took away... They didn't, that's not what they what they even did, though. Like, especially, like, the last sequence that you get with Joel, where Joel says, um, you know, he was, oh, I'm about to do my, my best Joel impersonation. Um, it's going to be terrible, but I'm going to do it anyways. You know, uh, what, what does he say? He's like, he's like, if I could, if I could go... If I could go back to that day, I would do it all over again. That was terrible. I don't know. He says if I, I don't know. He says something to the extent of like, if I go back to that day, I would do it all over again. So like, even by the end of that game, like 
they're still trying to they're still trying to have you see things from Joel's perspective and it's not like the game isn't telling you that no what Joel did was terrible like i just i don't and especially especially when you take into account um the first game like the the first game they they um they they try to they present the whole situation from you know a, like more heavily from the perspective of of Joel, right? And they try to, they you know, I mean, even honestly, like at least I don't know for me personally, when I was um playing The Last of Us, or and when I initially experienced The Last of Us, it was with a Let's Play. Um, well, like when I initially experienced The Last of Us, I wasn't like, like I was still pretty conflicted about the whole thing, you know. Um, and while uh, watching The Last of Us Part Two. You know, I was conflicted about the whole thing. And, like, I could totally see things from the perspective of Ali, uh, or of, Ab- uh, of Abby. Um, it's like, it, like, I never really took it as the game, like, um, necessarily, like, uh, like, I guess I'm trying to make Joel seem as like a villain necessarily it's just it's the game showing that action from a different perspective you know um because like the thing is is that i mean what joel did it was selfish and it it was um uh i mean yeah like he did doom humanity uh but it's like does that mean that you should like hate him as a character? I mean, I don't cuz I like I understand why he did it. Um and I mean that's to me that's what makes the first and the second game so good is that um like yeah, like none of uh none of these situations are black and white. Um and that's just the thing. Like I guess like I guess um the thing that I just like entirely disagree with with this video is that I guess I just like I don't I just don't agree that The Last of Us 2 is like trying to force things down your throat. I think they're presenting things. I think they're uh, presenting interactions that I think are pretty natural and I think they are letting you uh, come to your own conclusions on these things. Like I don't you know and even and, and here's the thing even if they weren't i would still think that would be okay like i like that's the thing like i totally think that like it should be okay for uh an for an artist to just blatantly throw their politics in their games and make things be black and white like if an artist wants to make their art and push their politics in a blatant way I think they should be allowed to do that. Like, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You know, maybe I disagree with it. Um, but I, I would still be, um, like, like I would still be open-minded to playing their game or, or watching their movie and seeing their point of view. I, and then, yeah, like if I vehemently disagree and I think that, and you know, I, I think that they are, um, pushing like, like um like negative messages then i'll call them out on their negative messages that they're pushing but like i would never want to like stop them from doing so you know so i don't know a little bit of magic there you took away a way of discussing morality and choice and how choices are made from people that that stays sort of just a conversation it it doesn't get into this really charged well if you don't believe this you're a bad person territory and i think people desperately need that people use a lot of entertainment i mean that that's why i think reality tv became so popular though uh, i've been watching the newsroom that old show from like 2012 and 2000 to 2014 now i've never seen it before um it holds up really well for something that was so critically dumped on at the time i didn't have access to hbo shows i don't know what that is 
Um, but, you know, they make the case that everything becoming so tabloid, every be everything becoming so reality TV isn't harmless. I think, though, that people... <sighs> People crave contact and people crave connection and the discussions okay. of who's being a nasty so-and-so on Real Housewives or Survivor or, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, they're, for a lot of people, really unimportant debates. And so they can, you know, disagree and not be enemies. And I... I would argue that that's why Star Wars got so toxic because it went from people arguing over whether Han shot first is correct canon to if you Star Wars got toxic because was Star Wars ever preachy with its like SJWness? I'm okay. Like I'll be honest, I don't really like the sequel trilogy that much and I don't even really. I haven't like really gone back and rewatched the the movies, but I don't even think it ever got preachy with its like, with like SJW stuff. Like I think, like I think they just had a Finn was just black and Ray was just the protagonist, and you know, like, I think there was like one lady with purple hair. Um, I like the. The reason why uh, Star Wars got so toxic was just because uh, people just got, they, they got mad of things that, you know, d I don't think that is reasonable to get mad about. And, you know, uh, I would argue that these uh, these these SJWs just got mad because, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> over things that 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 uh, that, uh, you know. Um, I, they, they just got triggered. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm trying to remember, like, I don't think that, I don't think the, the sequel trilogy ever even got preachy. Did it? I, I really don't think they did. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. You don't hold these views. You're a terrible person and you're racist and sexist and all that stuff. People need times where they don't have to worry about ostracism. That amount of cognitive load on an ongoing basis is not healthy people fear ostracization people fear fear being excommunicated um i didn't realize how much most people are terrified of that Wait. i think because well, i've how... never if you're somebody who isn't bigoted if you're somebody who wouldn't see you know two girls kissing and then intervene then i don't understand why you would be ostracized by that scene um and if you are you know if you are bigoted and you felt ostracized by that scene I don't have sympathy for you. <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Fit in. I've never felt like I really belonged any anywhere. I don't know what it feels like to belong somewhere. So I've never, I've never experienced a sense of loss of something I never had, if that makes any sense. But, you know, observing people and talking to them and, and seeing the intense fear they have of that sort of rejection, maybe I'm better off never having known the feeling I belong. And yeah, I've never really felt like I belonged in any community. Uh, I've never, I've always been not enough or too much everywhere. And that includes gaming. Now, I will say the gaming community has been the closest to feeling like I belong anywhere, but oh my god, how many times have I been- Okay, um... I... Uh... Listen, if I... I mean, I... I've also never- I, I would say, like, I've definitely, um... 
have definitely never really felt like I've belonged anywhere also, you know? Um, like, I mean, that's definitely a thing that I've felt in my life before, but I, I don't know if I agree that, like, that, like, The Last of Us 2 or, or even the Star Wars sequel trilogy has ever done anything to make people feel like they don't belong, uh, or at least in The Last of Us 2's case. I don't think that game did anything that, honestly, unless you're a bigot, like like a legit bigot, I don't know that they did anything that would make you feel like you don't belong. Um, and even even then, it's not like. It was a completely uh, black and white issue. Like, as we said, like, Ellie had her reaction and then different characters had different reactions that kind of made it that situation a bit of a gray area. So, I mean, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, like, I don't want to be mean to her when she's like, you know, telling this sort of like sentimental story about her life. Um, And, you know, it's, it's definitely one that I relate to. Um... I just don't think it really has anything to do with the game or anything that the game did, you know? Been canceled in this community? Exactly. That doesn't exactly foster a feeling of belonging. And I'm used to it, you know? It's normal for me. I can't imagine. Although, I guess if she's saying in this if she's saying in this case that her saying her thoughts on the game has has made her be canceled okay maybe in that case she has if that's what she's saying here and not necessarily saying that if she's not saying that the game itself made her feel distanced and it's more so the people responding to her thoughts on the game has made her feel distanced okay maybe there i can maybe have some sympathy for her if that is what she's saying what it would be like if i felt accepted and then no longer felt accepted anymore that would be like telling me i wasn't allowed to have cats anymore like that's the only thing i can really connect to it like no i no no you can't take that from me you you cannot take my cats i love my cats you can't take my cats away from me right you notice my point of connection maybe it's a little flimsy but i don't think so i love my cats but so I have to say, I now understand, keep your politics out of my games in the, it's not to be taken literally, the same way defund the police isn't to be taken literally in most cases. And I agree (laughs) with the argument that intensely pedantic, in your face, forced political propaganda cheapens interactive media. Because interactive media is inherently two-way. Propaganda is inherently one-way. It's media that attempts to... Okay. Pers- I don't know. Obviously, she's almost done here. But I just... I don't understand how, in, like, the same video, you can say that Naughty Dog games are, like, a one-way street where you're not participating in Nathan Drake's story. You are merely... Um, you are merely the stunt choreographer and like you're not Nathan Drake. Nathan Drake's story is being told to you. I just I don't really understand how you can say that and then in the same video have a problem with that. Um Yeah, that's really the <laughs> I, I don't understand how you can really say that. Um Yeah, I mean I guess like yeah, I just I don't think that uh, Naughty Dog's politics were being forced uh, down your throat at all in The Last of Us Part Two, Like, even the one instance where you could maybe make the argument that that's the case. Uh, like, it wasn't even a black and white situation there. So, I don't... I, I yeah, I... Swayed, coerce, I don't agree. shame you into a particular way of thinking. And that's just anathema 
when it, it comes to the way gamers approach media. So I have changed my mind. There you have it. Interesting to hear what you guys are going to say about this. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching. Okay. I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I pretty much um, kind of uh, wrapped up my thoughts at the end of this. But, like, like yeah. And, and that's the thing, right? So... She says that she doesn't like that politics is being forced. She doesn't like it when it's forced down your throat, right? And and honestly, this this actually just kind of uh, this kind of goes back to like um uh, <laughs> uh this kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning, right? Where it's not that it's not that people don't like uh. I don't even know if I explicitly said this in the beginning, but it's not that people don't like politics being forced down their throat. It's that when people say that, it's that they're, what they're really saying is that they don't like politics that they disagree with being forced down your throat. Um, because she, she, she said it at the end, right? She doesn't like that. Um, that, that the game is trying to like force you to think a certain way. But it's like, what about in a, I don't know, in like a, uh, in like a Batman game, right? Where, uh, the Joker, like, murders somebody. Well, the game paints that in a way very, I, I feel like the, I feel like that game is, it's really trying to, like, force you to think that murder is bad. Um... And I don't know. I I just feel like uh I feel like the Batman games are just really shoving their politics down my throat by saying that murder is bad and that you know bat and that like Batman is a hundred percent justified in trying to stop it. Um, you know I I just feel like Rocksteady is um they're they're just really trying to force that down your throat right okay that, that's ridiculous right <laughs> that, that's a completely ridiculous thing to say and i guess that's just kind of how i feel about the about about this whole situation with the last of us too it's like it's like i don't know there was just a bigot being a bigot right and that situation uh to me is pretty black and white, right? Where the guy was being a bigot. Now, the response to that bigotry, I guess that could be a, a, a bit more of a black and white situation. That could be a bit more of a black and white situation. And in the game itself, it was kind of a black and white situation because Ellie, you know, being the victim of bigotry, she wasn't having any of it, right? She, she didn't want that sandwich. She did not want that bigot sandwich. But, uh, what's her face? I keep on forgetting her name. Marlene. Uh, whatever. Marlene and Jesse, they, on the other hand, kind of try to handle the situation and de-escalate it. Um, and, uh, you know, and not add a fuel to the fire, right? So, like, it's just, like, even in the game, like, it's not necessarily a black and white issue. The only issue that's black and white is is the one that quite frankly should be black and white um it, it's it's just the the fact that what the guy did like was bigoted and my pc is actually running out of battery so i'm gonna need to wrap this up um but yeah i i don't know am i being am i getting my point across clearly here like it it's just like like yeah i like, I guess I just, I don't think The Last of Us 2 was shoving, like, shoving their politics down our throats. I think, honestly, throughout the entirety of the game, it's trying to basically paint everything um, Ellie does in a murky, gray area. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, and I think it's pretty ridiculous that one throwaway line in the game 
caused her to change her to to like taint her view of the entirety of the game and not just the entirety of this game but the entirety of games um that's pretty ridiculous uh yeah people uh they it's not that they don't want politics in this game in their games it's just that they don't want politics that they disagree with in their games so i don't know maybe i can go into a bit, bit more detail but my uh battery is running out so I think I'm just going to end the video here. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Do you think I'm off? Do you think I'm right? Tell me why in the comments below. And subscribe. Goodbye.